All right, what are we looking at today, Ryan? So we were just talking about how the culture war is mm -hmm. tearing our politics apart in, in the last segment. And I think it hasn't actually hit the government at this moment because you have unified one, one party control. And yes. so when the, when, uh, when the parties control government, they, have a, they can actually do things, they can pass things. And so they're gonna focus on actually legislating until such time as we return to divided government, yes. and we won't be passing anything. And I think at that point, you're gonna see the culture wars come, come right back. Yeah. roaring back. And you're gonna see, you know, how, if, if Republicans take the House, they'll be doing investigations into Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. uh, the Biden administration will be turning all of its different executive order uh, knobs to try to tweak whatever kind of culture war sentiments Democrats have because they won't be able to pass anything. What we're all missing is that the, the, the kind of country's laws are being uh, rewritten as, as we speak, mm -hmm. and in many ways, in, in a very good way. Like you, you mentioned in the last segment that Republicans paid more attention to Dr. Seuss than they did to the $1.9 <laughs> trillion dollar COVID relief yes. bill. That was, that's not, not only true, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We're also missing a, a huge rewrite of all of the laws and supports around raising children yes. and being a parent in this country. So I wanted to talk about that one. So the Washington Post and Jeff Stein scooped recently. So next week, the, Biden is going to give an address in the economy, and, and he's going to talk a lot about how he's changing the way that the government supports people who have children. And mm -hmm. so there's going to be a lot of this in what's called the American Families Plan. Now, Jonathan Cohn over at uh, HuffPost last night spelled out in a lot more detail exactly what some of that might look like. So through the American Families Plan, there's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars spent, first of all, to extend the child tax credit. That was, to me, the most transformative part of, yes. the, of the last COVID relief package. It is. And yeah. it got mocked by a lot of people because Democrats went out and said, we're going to have child poverty. And everybody said, well, yeah, for one year, mm -hmm. which if that's the case, then okay, good for the kids that you know, creeped right. out of for poverty one year, for, to eat. for one year, yeah. but we didn't transform mm -hmm. the country. There's an asterisk on that. If you make it permanent, you actually are talking about a transformative change. You're talking about hundreds of dollars a month per child, uh, cash, going out to families. And it's, it, the, the way that this is being done differently than it was in, in, under the Reagan and Clinton era is that it's cash and it's also going to poor families. Mm -hmm. What Reagan and Clinton and Obama, what, what they would say is, okay, the middle class can get some tax credits, but for the poor, you, get, you need drug tests, you, get, you can have food stamps, you can have WIC, you, know, you, can, you can go to the soup kitchens. Right. We will give you relief, but we're going to make you suffer indignity in order to get it. What this is saying is, no, we trust you as people. Here's cash. Go out and spend that cash as you need to take care of your family. So his new plan extends it through 2025, which I want to get your yeah. take on because there's some well, serious the, uh, tax cuts come up. And yeah. the, right. And there's yeah. some serious politics at play there. That's right. And the, the second layer of it subsidizes child care. Mm -hmm. Right now, one of the biggest hurdles to escaping from poverty as a parent is child care. And this is now something that also hits middle and even upper middle class people who see that, ch that full-time child care costs more than private tuition at like nice yeah. private schools. And, they, they, and they're even having to, rich people are even having to cut mm -hmm. back on some of their luxuries in order to f afford child care. And so this is an opportunity for Democrats to kind of reshape what it means to be a parent in the United States in a way that could be lasting and could last even into the era when we're back to just fighting legislatively over Dr. Seuss. No, I think you're right. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that's happening here. And actually, the expanded child tax credit has been a, well, it was more of a Republican idea, mm -hmm. at least right, for a long right. time. With a controversy where it all comes around, and I've, I've been involved in some of this, which is the reason why even the more pro-family Republicans are against it is because of what you're talking about there, which is the lack, I think it's the lack of work requirement um, mm -hmm. whenever it comes to the bottom, not even quintile, it's lower than that, number of families. Anyway, so their theory is not only does that discourage work amongst those people, it could increase like, you know, single motherhood, etc., but that there will be a large political backlash against that, a la the way there was a mm -hmm. 
Reagan, and so that voting for like a universality program would invite political controversy in the future. It's possible. Right. I have yet to see the evidence for that. I, and this has been my response, I just think we live in a fundamentally different country than 30 right. years ago. I really do, um, especially whenever it comes to cash assistance. A lot of the problems they were trying to solve with welfare reform like don't really exist anymore. Teen pregnancy is actually like way on the low. Um, in terms of um, child fertility and all that, I mean, I'm very much of a firm belief that we are in like a massive fertility crisis. Right. Um, Joe Rogan has a great new episode I highly recommend on declining number of sperm counts. Uh, don't microwave food with plastic. <laughs> but really what I'm more interested in here is about how the politics go on that front. Because with the problem that the pro-family Republicans find is that they find themselves in alliance with the deficit hawk Republicans who just hate this because it costs money. And so you'll have a united GOP against it, but for different reasons. My response generally to them has been, okay, your concerns are valid, but do you actually have a political constituency where when you're in power, you would be able to pass the quote unquote conservative alternative? I just don't believe that's the case. Right. There, there, I mean, how many pro-family Republican votes are there in the Senate? I don't know, maybe like 10, 11, right. if they're in the majority. When the minority, everybody's like, oh yeah, we'll vote for that. But then right. everybody starts talking about the deficit and all of that, where I'm very curious to see how that goes. The second thing you said there was childcare. That's actually where I think the biggest fight is gonna be. We covered an American Compass poll here where actually it's upper quintiles of people are the ones who want childcare, and the bottom quintiles are actually the people who want just like more cash assistance. Mm -hmm. I would say this probably splits a difference. So if you give more cash assistance, you give the ability to moms who don't want to work and stay home, which is a lot of moms actually, then I think that's fine. I'm very much in support of that. Same thing on child, like if you want to work, go for it. So I think that's really where it's going to be. I do think it's going to, it's, I don't think there are any Republicans will be able to vote for this because they're going to be afraid of an attack from the other mm. side, either being like for the dole, you know, the whole dole, this is old school politics I'm talking about here. Right. And, I, and again, I'm not convinced that it's actually that it's the same dynamic. The second thing is gonna be on the universal child care, which is that they're gonna talk more about like, we wanna give families the ability to stay home. And I believe some of the people who are saying this, I will just be very cautious and say there are gonna be a lot of Republicans using pro-family Republican talking points when really they're like Ron Johnson and they just don't wanna vote for an expansion of the government. And 2022 will be a fascinating thing because there's gonna be some Republican out there who's gonna run against new expansion of welfare. And we'll see. I'm really curious. I want to, like, I've heard a lot about how the American people aren't going to tolerate this, et cetera. Let's see. I yeah. want to, you know, I, I just don't buy it. I really don't. Not in the year 2021 after the pandemic, changing attitudes around economics. I mean, you see 60%, five, 65% Republican approval for $15 minimum wage in Florida. I just think we live fundamentally in a different era. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think you're probably right that in the end, you probably don't end up with any or many, not one. Uh, maybe not one re Republican vote for this, but I do think it's possible that Democrats might might actually come together and and push. What about Mansion though? Push this what through. About <laughs> I, th I think uh, I think for for Mansion uh, the the care component can can really help. Mm -hmm. So in in West Virginia, care is one, you know the care economy is a, is a significant That's driver huge. Yeah. of jobs. You know there there isn't much going on in West Virginia econ economically. If if you can get uh, you know federal federal support into into child care, uh, and you know, and employers in West Virginia, as Manchin loves to talk mm -hmm. about, are <laughs> always complaining that they can't find enough job applicants. Mm. Well, one of the reasons they can't find job applicants is that parents are at home because they can't afford child care. Mm -hmm. the, something, the median wage in West Virginia is something like $11 yeah, an hour. Yeah, it's very low. Right. If your child care is going to cost more than that, yeah, then you stay home. Then you stay home. Mm -hmm. Whether Man, woman, whatever your ideas of, uh, of, of what the proper role of a mother and a father and a family, just if economically, if it costs you more money to work, then you're not going to go to work. People go to work not because they love to do it, because Absolutely. they're because, they because they're making money. So if what what the White House is trying to do, and that's why they're pushing both of these the 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 credit, you know, which is cash in your pocket, and changing childcare, both raising the quality of it, raising the pay of it, but also then making it more affordable. And in order to do in order to do that, you have to subsidize it, and you have to increase the supply of caregivers, which which creates more jobs. That, that changes what it means to be a parent in this country, and they have a chance to do it. 
Will Manchin be the ones that, one that stands in the way? I don't know. If you read Cohn's piece, though, there's a moment of, of optimism at the end when he says, now the opposition is coming. And you read that, that section and you realize, oh, this opposition can all be beaten mm -hmm. because it's all political and ideological. It's not industry. Yes. Like when you're trying to. That's a good. You're point, trying to create actually. Medicare yeah, for all. Money up you're up against big yeah, pharma. Right. You're up against the insurance industry. Right. You're up against the device makers. They're all coming together. You can beat them eventually, but you're going to have to have a multi-billion-dollar yeah. organized effort, you know, coming at them. There isn't really an organized effort in corporate America that no. is deeply hostile to mm -hmm. this. There are there are churches that are against it, and there there are political strains in our country that push against it, but. There, there's no multi-billion dollar lobbying campaign that's going to try to throw you out of office. I hadn't thought about sport, it that way. That's very this. smart, actually. Yeah. All right. Next on Rising, Roger Fisk and Emily Chichinsky. They're back with us for Team Rising. That's when Rising continues.